Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about the properties of arithmetic. This is a very easy, easy and very simple concept for us to cover, but it's a very foundational skill and concept to have. So let's just hop right into it. Okay, so in a previous video, we talked about the order of operations. Let me fix that. Okay, we talked about the order of operations. All right, and we did examples of them. All right, so we say that it's the order we handle handle numbers. If we're trying to add, subtract, multiply, divide, even take exponents, okay? And we said that order follow this acronym, PEMDAS. Some of you guys might have seen it as GEMDAS. But it, it's the exact same thing. As long as you have a grouping symbol, exponents, multiplications, division, addition, subtraction. All right, and so these ideas follow. They are what we call arith arithmetic properties. And they only cover the four basic operations. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Okay. And so let's talk about these properties actually. So I'm, I'm gonna list them off for time's sake because that's going to take a long time if, if I give an example for each one. So these, these are just going to be a list. If you guys would like me to do examples for each of these, uh, let me know in the comment se section down below, and I'll gladly make another video on it. But, so, so we're going to find three variables because we're going to be listing these out throughout them all. So let's talk about the first operation, addition. Okay. So we we have a property that says, all right, if we have any number A or any number B or C, it doesn't matter. If we have any number and we add zero to it, well, it stays the same. And we call this an identitive property. Now, we also have one that says, all right, if we have A plus B, it'll be the same as B plus A. So with addition, it doesn't matter exactly the order that we add them, and as long as we, we could switch addition around. As long as we follow the order's operations, wh whatever order we add numbers in, we're fine. We can add them in. And th this, this goes for any number of numbers. So if we have A plus B plus C, it'd be the same as C plus B plus A. It'd be the same as B plus C plus A, and as you see, so on and so forth. Okay? Now, if, if we have grouping symbols, okay, we could group our numbers if we want. So A plus B plus C, but B and C are, in, are grouped together. It would be the same as, uh, it, as if we grouped A plus B and left C outside. All right, now we have another one that says... If we add a number and we add the opposite to it, it comes out to be zero. Okay, multiplication. And just like addition, we have an identitive property. And so what that means is, and what it is, is if we take a number and we multiply it by itself, by, by one, it'd be the number. It'd be itself. So if we took two times one, it'd be the same as two. 3 times 1, that'd be 3, and so on and so forth. But we also have a 0 property. So if we take a number and multiply it by 0, this is 0. Okay? This is very important because it allows us to count all terms. And just like, and just like addition, I, we can multiply things in any order. Multiplication, like addition, is commutative. So if, if we have A times B, it would be the same as B times A. And simil similarly, it would be, if we had A times B times C, it would be the same as, it would be the same as C times B times A, or it would be the same as B times A times C. And so on and so forth. And if, if we have grouping symbols, 
So if we have grouping symbols A times B, the grouping symbols are random, and we multiply, multiply that quantity by C, it'll be the same as A times the quantity of B and C times C. All right, so our first property of division would be we can't divide by zero. So uh, you guys might have seen this when you guys covered pre-algebra. Uh, this notation of, of a fraction bar uh, symbolizes division as well. The reason being is this this gets confusing sometimes. The uh, dot and dot is confusing sometimes when we write it out. So we just say, okay, it'll be this number divided by this number. But we can't divide by zero ever. This is undefined. This can never happen. If we do divide by zero, it becomes an undefined expression and un an undefined quantity because we can't, uh, it's not possible to divide by zero. If you guys took four, four pies, it would be impossible to uh, divide that by zero friends. And this is really important for later topics called uh, fun for functions and a lot of calculus. But this comes up all the time, too, in algebra as well. But this comes up a lot in math. Our second one will be... We could divide 0 by any number. So where in the last one we had... Uh, we can't have 0 in the denominator. We can't divide by a 0. We could have 0 in the numerator because we're dividing 0 by a number. And that'll give us zero. And that's a very, very cool idea. Because in case we need to get rid of terms, and there's a zero on one side, when we're solving equations later on, that allows us to simplify things down even further. With ease, I should say. All right, now let's talk about our third one. If we have a number divided by another number, if we have a number, a quantity A, and another quantity B, and we're to divide them. We well, we could write multiplication, or we could write division as a multiplication. But instead of of uh, instead of multiplying by b, it'd be the inverse of b, which would be one over b. So it's what we call the reciprocal. All right. So this is the same as saying a times one over b. This is really, really, really cool because this allows us to do a lot of different work for equations which we'll talk about in a future video. Division could be written as multiplication. This is a very, very cool topic. And lastly, we have another identity, and not necessarily an identity, it's the inverse of an identity. Okay, so where we had, so in the multiplication, where we had, let me find it. In the multiplication where we had a times 1 is equal to a, we can now write this as if we divided a number by another number, it would be 1. So this means multiplication and division are kind of inverses of each other in a sense. And if you guys want me to go into that, uh, that's a whole different topic of mathematics and uh, we could do that though that'd be really fun and the last property we have so we have subtraction so the first property we have if you remember from addition pull it back up this property here that says a plus zero is equal to a well if we take any number a minus a will be zero so from here we could see or at least we could uh, guess that addition is, addition and subtracting and subtraction are actually inverses of each other very very cool idea um, that 
and keep in mind we're not proving any of these these would these would take forever to prove and if you guys would like to see the proofs for these let me know in the comment section that'll be really cool be, that'll be a cool video idea uh two if we have a minus zero that's equal to a All right, and now, lastly, uh, sorry for the weird cut, guys. Um, what I was trying to say in that last part was subtraction isn't commutative or associative, meaning, let me pull up the last one. So with the addition to multiplications, you guys see that we could add numbers in, in, in any order, and we could multiply in any order. But, and if with grouping symbols, we could move the grouping symbols in any order. But with subtraction and division, it doesn't work that way. With that being said, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video.